Today, we're going to take a look at these four Escoda travel brushes. Now, I love travel brushes. I love um, their compact design. I love how high tech they look. They look like something that uh, belongs in a James Bond film or even um, something on Batman's utility belt. So today I'm gonna to take a look at these four uh, synthetic Escoda travel brushes. Uh, we're gonna compare them and see how they stack up next to each other. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Brian again. Thank you for joining me today. And thank you to all new subscribers and past subscribers. I appreciate it very much. Um, I've been away for a couple of weeks. I've been off planet, but I am back and ready to share travel brushes with you guys. Uh, these are a couple other brands besides Escoda. I'm gonna be going over Escoda brushes today, but this is a Da Vinci uh, Pure Kalinske brush. And this is a Joe Miller Signature Series from Cheap Joe's. Um, and I'm showing you these because uh, these are a couple style of brushes that I've kind of, uh, have kind of found their way into the back of my art tackle box, if you will, um, because I like the Escoda brushes so much. Um, uh, the Da Vinci's are nice brushes, but I'm not a big fan of the thick barrel on the bigger brushes and, and just the... Uh, uh, the the transition from the ferrule to the uh, the handle there it's a little bothersome to me um, also the cheap Joe's brush uh, these are decent brushes but they don't hold points very well so I kind of got tired of those which brings us to why we're here today um, I wanted to compare all four of the uh, synthetic Escoda travel brushes that I'm aware of um, each one of them is a number 12, so that we're comparing apples to apples here in a sense. You know, we're not, when we look at uh, how much paint they hold and that kind of thing, we're going to be on equal footing with each brush. So they're all the same size, number 12. Um, the first brush here I'll show you is the Escoda Perla. Now this is a white synthetic brush. The, uh, the Escoda website calls it a white Torre synthetic fiber. It's very soft. Um, and is a far cry from uh, white synthetic brushes from maybe 20, 25 years ago. If you've used those in the past, this is a far cry from, from that synthetic fiber back then. Uh, this stuff performs really well. It's very soft and holds a lot of water. Um, now, the website says that this uses three diameters of bristles and three lengths of bristles to achieve its perfect point, which I found interesting. So there's uh, more than just one size bristle going on here. Um, the website also mentions that this is uh, a watercolor brush, but it can be used for acrylic to uh, in a pinch maybe. It didn't give it a high rating for an acrylic brush. The next brush up is the Escoda Prado, if I can find it. Now this brush, according to the website, uh, imitates Sable's colors, you know, Sable, natural Sable uh, bristles color. Uh, but also it's spring and liquid retention. Um, this also is made with three diameters of bristles and three lengths of bristles to achieve uh, the what you see here. <laughs> it's a nice sharp point. So uh, the website also mentions that this is good for both watercolor and acrylic. It gives it a pretty good score for acrylic. Next brush up is the Escoda Ultimo. Now this brush um, is made to imitate squirrel hair. And if you're somebody who uses squirrel, um, you know, or squirrel brushes, not a live squirrel, but squirrel brushes. If you use squirrel hair in your brush, you know that it retains a lot of liquid, um, but they're not real um, snappy. They, they kind of bend a lot and they don't uh, kind of spring back to uh, a point in a, in a, in a straight shape. So, the benefit of Squirrel and the benefit of this synthetic version of Squirrel that Escoda uh, has put into the Ultimo is that it holds a lot of water, holds a lot of paint, 
um, and is good for bigger washes and things like that. Um, it is very soft, um, and uh, according to the website, this is uh, made only for uh, watercolor. The last brush here is the uh, Versatil, or Ver Versa I don't know how you pronounce it, Versatil. I just call it Versatile, the Versatile brush. Um, this one, according to the website, has exceptional snap, absorption, and retention. Um, and one of the main differences uh, with this brush versus the other three is that um, it gives it a pretty good rating. Um, well, it gives it an excellent rating for watercolor, but it also says that it works with acrylic and oil. So this is probably a more versatile brush across different mediums. And not that you'd want to use this, br this you know, one brush for different mediums, uh, you know, between the mediums. But uh, if you wanted to buy one for oil and buy one acrylic or buy, you know what I'm saying, even though I'm getting tongue tied. Um, anyway, so this is the versatile. Uh, it's made with something called Kalinsky fiber, but it is a synthetic brush. Now, one thing that I was kind of, when I started looking at Escoda brushes, that kind of baffled me is why the Prado and uh, the Versatile both exist in the line. They're so similar um, in terms of uh, their handling and uh, water absorption, uh, stuff like that. Um, I guess the one of the big differences is, I guess, like I mentioned, the Versatile uh, will be uh, good for both acrylics and oils as well, whereas the Prado is not. Um, the Prado might be slightly snappier and the Versatile slightly softer, but I don't know. They're, they're very similar brushes, uh, but we will compare them and we'll see which one I prefer. Okay, the first test I'm going to perform on these four brushes is um, to see how much uh, paint each one can retain uh, in a brush full. I've got uh, one mixture of blue, uh, phthalo blue paint here, and I shouldn't have dipped that in there yet. I'm going to rinse it out. So each of the brushes, I'm going to give a rinse in the water, and I'm going to I'm going to wipe it as dry as I can with a paper towel. I'm going to dip it into the moisture, the moisture, the mixture um, of my phthalo blue here. Um, load it up good. Get any extra drops off. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to check and see how far I can go with this. So I'm going to start up here. You've seen these tests before, I'm sure. So I'm just going to see how far each of these brushes can go with one brush load. All right, so that's basically it for the Perla. So it filled up one full bar and a little tiny bit of the next bar. Okay, next brush up is the Escoda Prado. Like the Perla, I'm going to rinse it in water and then get all the water out of there that I can. Okay, same mixture. Let it drop off any excess, the two extra drops there, which is I think what I got off the Perla. Okay, so let's see how the Prado does. Okay, that's surprising to me. The Prado uh, wasn't able to even fill um, one bar compared to the Perla, which did a full bar and a little, a uh, little extra. Next up, we're going to try the Ultimo. Now this is the squirrel hair one, or the imitation squirrel hair, and um, while it doesn't have the snap and the point of the others, um, this one should definitely hold the most pain. If it doesn't, that would be interesting. Okay, so the Ultimo does outperform the Perla and the Prado so far in terms of uh, capacity. I think I'm pretty much spent there. 
So as you can see, you almost got, well, you know, a full bar and then, you know, maybe half to three quarters of the third bar or the second bar. Last brush up will be the versatile. I'll rinse it in water. Get as much water out of there as I can. Dip it in the liquid here. All right. All right, so looks like the versatile kind of lost all its uh, paint by before we finish the first uh, bar here. So the versatile and the Prado um, were the two that I was concerned about mostly and because they were such similar brushes. Um, it looks like you get a little more paint out of the uh, versatile than you do the Prado. Um, obviously, the Ultimo wins here. And uh, for holding paint, the Perla actually does a little bit better than the Prado and the Versatile. Um, got a full bar and uh, a little bit more. So now between the Perla and the Versatile, uh, that may be pretty negligible in actual practice. Uh, but I'm surprised the Prado isn't uh, uh, down here in this range with the Versatile. So there's that. Uh, that's the, how much paint each will uh, <laughs> each one will retain and hold, and the Ultima wins it. Okay, our next little uh, quote-unquote test will be a look at the uh, the spring of the bristles or the snap of the bristles and um, how well they hold a point. So, uh, like with the other test, I will start with the Perla. See here, so all right, Perla. Aren't you impressed that I can write? <laughs> okay, so let's see here. This is the Perla. You can get some real fine little points here. It actually is performing very nicely um, in terms of getting some nice sharp little little lines. Okay, cool. Next up will be the Prado. Seem like I got a full brush full there or something. It got a little sketchy in the in the middle there. That's better. It's got good snap to it. Both the Perla and the Prado seem to have good snap. And um, yeah, the, the the point, the fine lines you're able to get with uh, the Prado and the Perla are both excellent. Let's move on to the Ultimo. And again, this was the um, this is the imitation squirrel hair. So this, <clears throat> uh, just to say it again, this brush is more about uh, capacity than it is. Um, things like point. Um, so you can see that it's it's got a full belly of paint there. I'll actually try to get rid of some of that. Now with the Ultimo, as can be expected, um, it's a little more difficult to get fine lines. Um, Um, it doesn't want to hold a point like the others do because it's 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 such soft uh, material. The bristles are very soft, so it's a little tough. I mean, not impossible, but it's a little tough to get um, get those fine lines. And 
uh, like I was showing you previously, um, it, it, it doesn't want to spring back as well as the other brushes. Okay, last but not least is the Versatile. Versatile, Versatile. Get some nice sharp, nice sharp little lines with the point on that. Cool. I should mention also that um, this Perla was sent to be sent to me by my buddy uh, Jared Cullum. Um, he also sent me a smaller size Ultimo and Prado to try. So, in case you haven't guessed, uh, all my best art supplies seem to come from Jared. So. so. Anyway, thanks again, Jared. Uh, but he did send me this number 12 Perla that I'm uh, contesting with the other number 12s here. So in looking at uh, the the lines and the splotches, um, they all hold, hold their points pretty well, uh, except for the Ultimo, which is uh, not really built to have a point like the others. I mean, that's why we have uh, different brushes. So... Um, yeah, I'm actually surprised uh, that the Perla is holding uh, the same fine lines that the Prado and, and Versatile uh, do. So, huh, interesting. Okay, I want to talk about price for or for just uh, a minute here. Um, and frankly, it's been tough to figure out um, how these compare uh, price-wise, because at least here in the U.S., they're uh, a little hard to, they're not hard to find, but it doesn't seem like any uh, dealer seems to have all four of them at once. Um, Amazon.com seems to be the place to uh, maybe choose between the four, but then again, those brushes aren't always in stock on Amazon, or all four brushes aren't in stock, and pricing on Amazon seems to uh, vary pretty wildly based on how many uh, pieces are in stock with a certain uh, place that's selling them. Um, so there seems to be more factors involved with Amazon in terms of pricing rather than just what the retail price of the brush is. Um, with all that convoluted stuff having been said, I have noticed that the uh, Versatile uh, brush seems to be the most uh, readily available um, on different websites like uh, Dick Blick, um, Jerry's Artorama, um, Cheap Joe's, they're, they're backordered right now. Um, but this seems to be the most uh, readily available brush uh, in the U.S. anyway, the, the Versatile. Um, the other three, and I, I do have to say the Versatile seems to be the cheapest of the four um, when I've looked. The other three, the Prado, the Ultimo, and the, the Perla, all seem to be uh, roughly the same price, um, a little bit more than the Versatile. Um, but uh, they're a little tough to, uh, to all find at once for sale, so it's a little hard to compare the prices. So in summation, I would say that these three run about the same price, and they're a little more expensive than the Versatile. Um, and I've seen a number 12 run about 30 US dollars um, at most places, give or take. So, so that's what I have for pricing. Okay, we've put them all through their paces. Um, so what do I think in conclusion here? Um, if you had asked me before doing this test which which brush was my favorite, I probably would have told you uh, the Versatile. And I'm not entirely sure why. I think part of it is that um, I like the natural look of the bristles. Um, but, let's see. Now I'm going to pull the Ultimo out of this little mix here. The Ultimo is very good at doing what it does. We've seen that it holds a lot of paint. Uh, maybe not as great, uh, obviously, uh, as a, a fine-tipped brush, but it does what it does well. And so um, I will always want to have some kind of squirrel brush, uh, squirrel hair brush, for holding a lot of paint 
So I'm going to put this aside. The Ultimo is something that will definitely always be in my kit. Um, but I'm going to pull it out of the running here because it's kind of a different type of brush than these three. Uh, these three are uh, uh, made to uh, mimic Sable uh, more than the uh, Ultimo, obviously, which is mimicking, mimicking Squirrel. So I will always have an Ultimo in my kit. And then if I had to pick from one of these three, uh, like I was saying, I, I originally I would have said Versatil. Um, because the Prado has sort of the same point and spring as the others, um, I'm going to pull that out because it holds the least amount of paint based on that test that we did. Uh, so we're down to the Versatil and the Perla. And I have to say, I even though I prefer the look of the Versatil with the natural looking brushes, I have to give it to the Perla. Um, it holds the most paint out of the three, uh, you know, fine tip brushes, and it holds its point uh, very well. In fact, this is the one that I've used the most out of these four. Um, I, I guess I should say it's gotten the most use, um, and it's holding a point great, and it still holds a lot of paint. So I think the winner for me is the uh, Escoda Perla which is a little surprising to me. I mean, they're all fantastic brushes. They all do a great job. Uh, but the Perla is uh, the standout, I guess. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And um, I really appreciate all the comments. Uh, I'm going to try to get to all the comments I've missed over the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, take care. Hey everyone, 